Welcome to Chin Fat. Uh, there's been a significant update, and most of you probably already know about this in After Effects. And that update is the Content Aware for Video function that has been introduced to the software, uh, which is pretty powerful uh, functionality that they've added to the software. <laughs> but uh, it, it still keep in mind that it is still in its infancy. It was just barely released, so there will probably be some bug fixes later and some improvements that come with this later. But right now, uh, it's pretty impressive. It works pretty well. There are some uh, weird little things. That, sometimes with some videos, it might work better or... Or, or, or worse, depending on what type of video clip you're using. With my experience so far on this, just messing around with this for, for the last uh, day or so, I found that uh, it really it works a lot better on shots that are, you uh, I, you would call them perpendicular shots, shots that are kind of moving in a side-to-side -side fashion, kind of like this shot right here. This is just shot on my cell phone, but uh, th this shot just moving side-to-side. -side. And if you want to take something like this sign out, this it, it actually works pretty well, and we're going to we're gonna take that into After Effects and kind of show you. But when things were on an approach, I was actually able to get this shot to work pretty well. There's this shot where we're moving up on this um, uh, cliffside here with a drone and there's this flag that's on top here somebody's put that flag up there and uh, if we want to remove that out so it looks more deserty like it's uh, like uh, there, there's no human trace out there or something like that we're gonna work on that as well and that that I was uh, actually able to work with pretty well uh, shots that are moving around really fast and changing uh, in a very dynamic tend to not work as well with this in fact they ju they just don't really work at all but a few different shots here that I've got that we're gonna try this out on and see how it works and give it a, give it a go so first of all, I'd recommend finding, just edit it down to the shot that you need to do the, the instead of trying to do it to an entire huge uh, shot, uh, just cut it down to the, the to just the portion of the shot that you need. Uh, this is for a 30 second commercial here. And uh, some things that we've been working on with removal on this are some of these modern day signs in the, in the telephone pole. But I'm gonna show you how to kind of remove this guy here and how well it actually works. So you're gonna right click on these clips and we're gonna do a replace with After Effects composition. And that will open After Effects. And uh, once that opens up, I'm gonna do it to these, these clips here here as well to the side-by-side -side effect uh, and to this cliff effect as well and then, then we'll go from there so once you right click on those what you'll see is it replaces it'll replace after effects in premiere you'll see it replaced with an after effects composition and then it's been placed in here in a new in a new composition and i've already done this with all these clips and i've and i've named them so i've got all my compositions in here ready to go so i'm going to close premiere and we'll go, go from there all right, so let's show the basics of how this works here. Uh, what we're going to do here, on, let's let's work on this shot here. Under the default arrangement, you'll see over on the side, you got all these uh, stacked tabs that will open up. And, and if it's on something else up here, you'll want to move on down, scroll to the bottom, and click on Content Aware Fill. If you don't see it there for some reason, but keep in mind, this is the latest version, the 16.1.0. And if you don't have that, if, let me go to About After Effects here under Help. If you don't have this 16.1.0, uh, uh, if it's earlier than that, it, this is not going going to work it will not be there for you so you got to update to the latest if you don't see this here you also welcome to go up to window and click on content aware right there check mark it and it should pop it up as well that's another way to bring it up all right so first thing you need to do is you're going to need to generate a mask on items that you want to remove out of the shot uh, and this is and keep in mind the way this works is it needs it needs space in front of what if we're going to eliminate this guy here it's going to need uh, frames in front of this guy and behind him pixels in front of him behind him and around him to basically fill this in since he's traveling side to side here. Uh, so if he's taking up so much of the frame that it never clears the door, you're not going to get that sort of function. But right here, he clears the door. So it's going to be able to take this picture of the door and plug it in after while he's in front of it. Um, so, But if, if that do door never appears, it's going to use that content aware where it's going to suck in pixels from around surrounding and try to do the best it can, but it's just not going to work. So with this shot here, I'm going to, uh, first of all, we're going to create a mask. So I'm going to go up. I've got my layer. i got to select my layer, go up and select my, I'm going to choose my Bezier tool. I'm going to alt zoom up to this guy here and I'm going to kind of click and drag a little loose uh, mask around him about as big as I'll need to keep it for as he moves side to side here. And there we go. And it cuts him out. What we want to do is we don't we want to see the whole thing. So I'm going to go down to mask and turn this to none so it doesn't show any mask. I also want to turn I kind of like turning this to a darker mask just so I can uh, I click on the, the on the little color right there to do that and change the color of the mask depending on uh, the background colors. Uh, we also have to go down to mask path and uh, click our keyframe on that. And I'm gonna move this ahead, maybe about like uh, five, 10 frames. I'm gonna grab my mask and move it forward on him again. I'm gonna keep doing this till I get to the end and keep him in frame. I'm gonna keep this animation going. Now, as you can see, uh, this is animating and following him, but you'll wanna kind of shuttle through this and make sure that he stays in that mask the entire time. And if he doesn't, you might need to add a keyframe in between here. Uh, so let me finish this and I'll come back and show you what I've got. 
All right, so this is what I've got with the main mask here. As I tr move through this, you notice his feet do not go out of the shot. His hands don't. At times, I, I, I have to move this around a little bit. Add, let's add another keyframe there just to keep his, make sure his feet stay in there all the way. You'll have to kind of skim through this just to make sure that he stays with it completely within that mask the entire time. Now I can go to, uh, once I'm done and I've got that, I can click on this on my little composite mode and tell it to subtract. And it's going to subtract everything that's in that mask. And now we're going to move over to the content aware area here. Uh, a couple things it's got. It shows a little alpha channel to show you what it's cutting out. As we move through that, you'll see the little animation um, move along there. It shows you what's being cut out. In fact, to get the same view, you can go over here and tell it to we move over here and uh, toggle our background to show transparency instead of black for a background so you can kind of see what's uh, what it's cutting out there. All right, so now we are going to move over here and we've got alpha expansion. It's always safe to move this up uh, by several pixels, maybe uh, depending on how aggressive it, aggressive it needs to get. I'm going to go about 15 pixels, uh, which it'll expand that mask by about 15 pixels there. The fill method, if you're using something on the flat ground, you're going to cho choose surface. Edge blend is something a little different. I haven't really gotten into that yet. The two the most common that are going to be used here, object and surface. If it's something that's on a flat surface, a flat plane, you're going to choose that, and it makes some improvements. Uh, but I'm going to do object. Since he's an object, I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do here. We're going to get into this create reference frame here, but it's going to do the entire, it's going to do the, either we have a work duration, which I haven't really selected here, or we can do the entire duration. Uh, work area works fine if you don't have in and out, you're, you, if you don't have your work area here shortened like this, but I, I'm just going to do the entire clip. So now we're going to hit generate generate fill layer and make sure that your mask is on subtract before you generate that, that layer or you're going to have to start it again. Right here it is creating a uh, sequence of PNGs that's going to overlay over this. So we're going to let this analyze and then it will render. Once it analyzes it'll do a render and then uh, we're going to come back and show you the final results of this. All right, it's finished and this is what we're left with. And look how that has removed this object. It's uh, done this little um, uh, PNG sequence, frame by frame uh, PNG sequence. Let's play through this here. And here's our result. And that's pretty dang good. It uh, took him out, and what, what it did, it didn't actually remove him. It actually did this uh, sequence of uh, uh, content aware filling in. Uh, l l let's kind of show you here. I'm going to cut out, I'm going to turn off the bottom layer and show you. It's created this top layer here. Notice how it expanded the mask by about like uh, 15 pixels there. And as we move through this, look what it's done. It's created a bunch of still images all blended together to create this final image here. And as I turn on the bottom layer, I'm going to play through that. So right here, if I grab this uh, top layer, the PNG layer, and pull it off, look what it's done. It's it put this on top. In fact, down below, I can even put my mask back on right now or tell it to do none. So you can kind of see what it's doing to cover right there. So it's covering him with uh, this little PNG sequence there. Then the only thing I really left out here is I left his shadow in. So I'd have to do another one for his shadow. But uh, but that is pretty dang, it does a pretty dang good job. I'm very, very impressed with this uh, just having been released a couple of days ago for the first time. So let's go to this cliff shot here. Uh, this cliff shot here, because this is a little bit different, this is where we're going to have to use another uh, feature of, of this uh, of the content aware fill here to uh, remove something from this image. And we've got this uh, flyover of this cliff here, and we've got that uh, American flag here. So I'd, uh, no offense that I'm removing the American flag, but um, I'm very patriotic and I love America so much. So let's remove that off the, the top here. So I'm going to create, first of all, create a mask. I have created a mask down here already, uh, just to kind of show you not having to go through that that step again where I've animated this mask and changing in size and scale here or it's changing in scale and a little bit size to keep that mask outline or to keep that flag outlined as this moves through the sequence here. So now I'm going to tell it to take that away. I'm going to subtract it and then it's gone. Uh, I've already increased by 15 frames there. I'm going to do two things here. First of all, I'm going to do my generate fill layer, uh, but uh, when we come back, I'm, I'm going to show you the difference between doing that and, first of all, creating reference frames. So I'm going to do it without creating a reference frame and then show you, kind of show you what, what we get here. So I'm going to hit generate fill layer, going to let that go. Uh, it starts analyzing. It'll do analyzing, then it will do rendering, and uh, we'll come back when that's finished. Okay, let's see what we got as we play through this. You can see this, it's like bulging and changing. It looks all weird, uh, especially because of the angle of that and it's so dynamically changing uh, the image. It's having a difficult uh, having a difficult time uh, really making that look good. Uh, as a good removal, see? And especially at the end, how it stretches out, it's all weird. So they've got this item in here uh, called Create Reference Frame. And the more reference frames you create, uh, it's going to uh, better interpret this uh, uh, because as the lighting changes over time, it's going to figure out what the lighting is from beginning to end if you give enough reference, reference frames to do that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is get rid of this 
PNG here. I've got my same mask there. Um, I'm going to turn my mask back to none, and we're going to create some reference frames. And this actually uses Photoshop. Uh, just make sure that, you're, that uh, Photoshop is your default. Make sure that Photoshop is your default uh, software for opening PSDs, which it naturally is, but sometimes it gets reassigned on computers. So if, if it'll if it gives you an After Effects open error message, you've got to make sure that your After Effects is the default software uh, for PSDs. So I'm going to go and create a um, a reference frame. And by the way, we were doing object because that's an object object we're trying to remove. But I'm going to hit create reference frame. It's going to take this first image here and open it up in Photoshop. Okay, here's our image in Photoshop. What we can do now is create a reference frame by using the content aware inside of Photoshop. Let's scroll up this. I'm holding Alt and just scrolling my mouse uh, with my mouse held over the the flag here. And I'm going to use my square mask and I'm going to. Draw a box over this, but a little bit bigger. I'm going to move in the middle and move it over. Right click on it, say fill, and make sure it's content aware. Hit content aware, you'll suck in all the pixels and make a little reference frame there. Hit control D, command D to get rid of your um, uh, your selection there. And then hit control S to save it. Control S is saved. I'm going to back, go back to After Effects. And it's created that reference frame and it's made that one frame right there. In fact, I turn, if I turn my mask on, uh, to subtract, uh, it makes that hole there and it's looking below it to the layer below it. Look at this, if I move it past that frame, see that it's just got that one frame there and we're going to do this for this sequence maybe like four or five times. I'm going to try it four times. Here, I'm going to move about one quarter of the way in. Let's turn this back to none or it will send that gaping hole over to After Effects so, uh, and hit create reference frame. I'll open this one up in Photoshop and do the same thing. I'm going to do this for four different spots here. So once again, select a box over it, kind of move this over the, the flag, right click, fill, and hit OK on Content Aware, Control D, Control S. So I'm going to create two more of these reference frames here. Let's go back to After Effects. There's that reference frame. I'm going to go halfway through, create another one, and maybe a couple more. And uh, when I'm done with that, we'll come back and see what we've got. So I've created four reference frames. You can see all four reference frames there for this, this one shot. Uh, now I'm going to go over to Generate Fill Layer. I'm going to click on this and let it start. And I'm going to let it uh, start processing now uh, with those reference frames. And once again, I've got my uh, mask turned to subtract. Very important, you got to have that on subtract there, back to subtract, uh, which I've turned down down here before I hit generate fill layer. So I turned it off to onto none just to get the the uh, the re reference frame, and then turn it to subtract uh, to get the uh, to generate the fill layer. But I'm going to let that go. Come back and we'll look at it when it's finished and see see what the difference is. All right, it's finished. Let's play through it, and that looks a lot better. That looks a ton better. Uh, as we look at this really close, uh, you can see a little shadow change there at the end. Right here, you see that shadow right here kind of blend into a smaller shadow. But wow, that that, lo that looks really, really good, though. And maybe it, hardly anybody would notice that, but it's not perfect. But my goodness, that's... And if I created more reference frames, that would probably do uh, a better job, right? Especially right around the shadow, I'd probably want to do like a whole bunch of uh, reference frames in there, maybe like four or five just in this area right here and see what I get. But this is going to take some experimenting. I know it's going to, and it'll, they'll, they'll do some improvements on the on the feature as time goes on. But it, so far, I'm very, very impressed with what, what they're doing here. I mean, this to do something like this before would have taken a whole lot more steps, and uh, that's really facilitated this uh, process. Uh, let's go through one more here. This is one that's been is getting very commonly used uh, for After Effects for, for the new feature here that I've I've seen a lot of people showing on on YouTube and around the internet. I've I've seen where you've got like a sign in the foreground that you want to get rid of, or some big beautiful building in the background, and you're trying and you got like telephone wires and other thing or a telephone pole or ugly things kind of in the foreground. Uh, so here's kind of an example of that. This is I guess beautiful mountains. This is just my phone, so it's not very exciting footage. But I've created a mask here, I've, and I've done the mask around this sign here. So I want to get rid of that ice or and just have the beautiful mountains in the background and once again it needs it will need frames it'll need pixels to the right and to the left of this to, to work properly and it looks like and since it's a side to side it's Seems like these side-to-side -side, uh, shots do seem to do really, really well, especially if they're smooth shots. And this was on a little phone gimbal, so this this worked. This was pretty smooth for the most part. But I've created that mask here, and I'm going to go down. And this is an object once again, so I'm going to go down and hit Generate Fill Layer, and let's take a look at that when I get through processing. There it goes. And this with this something like this, this simple, it's not necessarily going to need those reference frames. It's on the more difficult shots, once again, if you try this and it doesn't work, you can delete this layer that it's creating, and then try it again. By, by creating a whole bunch of reference frames. And since this is a side-to-side -side shot, I, th I'm guessing this will work pretty well. Uh, it's those one shot, th those shots where you're moving toward it and past it that it, it seems to have a more difficult time on. So let's let that finish, and then we'll come back and take a look at what it's done. 
So to get that going, once again, I've got I've got this on none, and it needs to be uh, subtracted uh, here. So I need to go down and go to subtract. If it gives you an error message, it's probably because you forgot to turn this on subtract if it was on none. So put it on subtract, hit generate fill layer, and let it go. And then when the processing is done, we'll come back and take a look at what it's done. All right, and let's take a look at it. Looks like the bushes are kind of weird there at the beginning, but if you're not looking for it, then uh, I probably wouldn't even really notice it. But that did a pretty dang good job of removing the sign there. Uh, let's watch through it again. Uh, I see something kind of weird right there, but and once once again, this this is not perfect. And if you're using it for these different types of shots, you have to kind of experiment with it. I've just started experimenting with this and kind of just figuring it out. Uh, but so far, I'm very impressed with what it does. Uh, and this maybe this would help to do some reference frames and get something that looks more like bushes in that area right there. Anyway, so yeah, that that works pretty well. There, there, there's some uh, times when I've been asked to remove little things here and there, and 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 this is just going to be, and this is pretty much going to be a godsend. I, I I really really like what the the direction that this is going, and it's a very very powerful feature that they've added to After Effects. If you have any suggestions, because I know this is a new feature and people are figuring things out, please let me know. You can put them in the comments if you have any questions. Let me know. But yeah, I'm very excited about this, and thanks for watching.